In this video, I'm going to talk about the Arrhenius equation. So the Arrhenius equation tells us how the rate constant K changes based on activation energy and temperature. So as activation energy increases, the rate constant actually decreases. And as temperature increases, the rate constant also increases. So these are two important forms of the Arrhenius equation that you should memorize where K is the rate constant, and of course we know that the units of the rate constant vary based on the reaction. A is the frequency factor, and this has the same units as K. E sub A, or EA, is the activation energy, and usually this is in kilojoules per mole. R is the gas constant, and you can represent that as 0.00083145 kilojoules per mole times Kelvin. Finally, T is the temperature, and that is in units Kelvin. Okay, so I've got a problem down here in this box. It says for a given reaction, K is 3.27 times 10 to the negative nine at 465 Kelvin. And then K is 3.46 times 10 to the negative eight at 536 Kelvin. So you can see that our principle held true. The temperature went up and the, the rate constant or K also went up. And they wanna know what is this reaction's activation energy? So clearly in this problem, this form of the Arrhenius equation is gonna be most useful because we have two Ks, K1 and K2, and we have two temperatures, T1 and T2, and we're solving for Ea, or the activation energy. So the important part here is to pair together one K with its temperature and another K with its temperature. So I called K1 the 3.27 times 10 to the negative nine, and then it's vital that T1 is the temperature where that K was present. K2 is gonna be my other K, 3.46 times 10 to the negative eight, and I have to pair the right temperature with that, so T2 is 536 Kelvin. And in this case, we were given the temperature in Kelvin, but sometimes they'll give you this temperature in Celsius or Fahrenheit, and you have to make sure you convert it to Kelvin. So again, we're solving for the activation energy, and we're gonna use this form of the Arrhenius equation. So I went ahead and plugged everything in. So my K1 was 3.27 times 10 to the negative nine over K2, which was 3.46 times 10 to the negative eight, equals the activation energy over the gas constant times one over T2 minus one over T1. And again, it is very important that you keep K1 here, T1 here, K2 is here, and T2 is here always match those up correctly, otherwise you get the answer wrong. So this is essentially just an algebra problem from here. I went ahead and solved for what's in this parentheses right here. I went ahead and solved for this natural log over here. And once you do a little more rearrangement, you'll find that the activation energy for this reaction at these two trials turned out to be 68.85 kilojoules per mole. Okay, there's one other important form of the Arrhenius equation that you should know, and I've got it right here. It's the natural log of the rate constant equal to negative activation energy over the gas constant plus one over temperature plus the natural log of the frequency factor. And if you look closely, it's in the same form as y equals m times x plus b, y equals mx plus b, where y is the natural log of the rate constant, m the slope, is negative activation energy over the gas constant, X is one over temperature, and B is the natural log of the frequency factor. So we can actually plot a straight line if we have some data. So I have some data right here, and it's for this reaction, and I've got one over temperature in this column, and then the natural log of K in this column, the rate constant. So what I have is Y and X. So I can plot these points, x, y, x, y, x, y, x, y. And I did that on this uh, graph here. It's a very crude graph. I don't have precise points, but you can see that on the y-axis, I've got natural log of the rate constant. On the x-axis, I've got the inverse of temperature, or one over temperature. And you can see here, m, the slope, is always gonna be negative activation energy over r. So if we have a table of data, and we were asked to solve for the activation energy of this reaction, for example, we could do it like this. We take the rise over the run to get our slope. Remember, this is our slope, and the rise is gonna be from here to here on the y-axis. So on the y-axis, we had natural log of k, so it's gonna be this 
minus this, our last value minus our first value to get our total rise. So that was what is in the numerator. And then our run is gonna be from here to here, our total change on the x-axis. So I did this minus this in the denominator. I ended up with a number here, negative 34,194.9, and I knew that was equal to my slope term, negative EA over R. So what I did then was just simply solve for EA. I multiplied both sides by R and then by negative one, and I found EA to be 284.3 kilojoules per mole. I really hope this video helped you guys out. If it did, please hit that thumbs up button, and I'll see you in the next one.